question. And it's going to be real. It's, it's going to be informal, so don't, like, not talk. You can talk to me for real. Um, did you know that going to college and getting a job is the same thing as, like, playing a lottery? Yes, yeah. <laughs> it takes money to get a job. It takes money to get a job. <laughs> right. So you, you, gotta, you, gotta, you get it. So we, we would all agree that nothing in life is guaranteed. Mm -hmm. Okay, so us going to school, and, and I just want to kind of get you get this in your mind before we get started. Us going to school is not actually guaranteed for us to get a job when we get out of school. So even with that fact, don't I just want you to think of it. Don't let your degree be your destiny. Because some people go to school and be like, oh, well, I got to do this because I went to college for this. Well, we know people that actually get a degree in business and they work at McDonald's as a manager. Anybody know anybody that's not going that went to school for something and not actually doing what mm -hmm. they went to school for? Mm -hmm. A lot of people. All the mouths. <laughs> <laughs> no offense. Valid point. <laughs> but seriously, so we want to think about that. I just want to get that kind of in your in your mind to understand that school is good. It is good. It's a good mm -hmm. reference and it's good. It looks good on paper, but it's not for everybody. And you all are here because it is for you and you're doing doing well and that's great. But everybody can't be in your shoes. Some people take a little longer than other people. Some people been in school about 10 years trying to get a four year degree, and that's okay. Just get it. All right. But we're going to talk about a few things tonight that don't require us to be in college to get. And this is some information we're going to teach today. Now, I have my bachelor's from here at Henderson, and I'm getting my master's. I'll graduate in May um, from Euler. They didn't teach any of this information in school. And the two classes that I have left are not about this stuff that we're talking about. So what we're going to talk about tonight is stuff that you usually don't get in school. Okay. Um, Kristen said that she's a finance major and she know a little bit about one of the papers we gave her. That's great. But I'm actually going to ask her throughout the presentation if they teach her the stuff that we're going to talk about in school so I can get a, a verification just to know. All right. Let's go. So when we were children and we were in school, we dreamed. We wanted to be astronauts and doctors and lawyers and things like that, right? As kids. Yeah. When we turn 18, what happens? Reality hits. <laughs> 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 exactly. Reality hits. You got bills. You got your <laughs> right? Exactly. And and that's the thing. So we start dreaming once we when we once we hit the age because it's like I I thought I wanted to be grown, but I, I don't really think that I want to be grown no more. At least I wanted to go back home. I don't know about y'all. Um. So that's the thing. So today we don't want to sell you dreams. We don't want to sell you lotions or oceans or potions. We don't want to do anything like that, try to get you out pushing products. Not at all. But we want to help you to build wealth. All right? What does that mean? Well, we want to help you to minimize your taxes, eliminate debt, and then teach you how to invest your money. Now, everyone in here knows that whenever we go to school, unless you're under special circumstances, you get student loans, right? Yeah? Mm -hmm. Unless you're under special circumstances, which is probably about the top, the other 5% of people that go to school. So we're going to teach you how to pay those off faster. All right. Our company is called My Econ. We're fast growing, debt free, and technology driven. We're in all 50 states because we do everything online. We have veteran leadership. Our owner is Avi Stokes. is one of our owners. <coughs> he has made over $600 million in the industry alone. He is awesome. He um, loves to help people. He does not take a commission off of what we do. And what does that mean? Well, he goes and he does these sessions just like everyone else. He, he told me on a conference call about two weeks ago that how can I expect you all to build wealth with the information I'm giving you if I'm not doing it myself? So he honestly leads by example. Um, our mission statement is to empower people to attain personal financial success. That's what we do. Now, how many of you have... Well, how many of you would agree that we live in a capitalistic society? Yes, okay. definitely. Okay. Now, let's explain capitalism. Raise your hand if you have an iPhone or Android. Everybody in the room, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, that's capitalism because if we knew how to make those phones, we wouldn't be sitting in this room today. Agreed? Okay. And they capitalize on our lack of knowledge because they overcharge us for those phones. And we buy them anyway because we need our cell phones. Right. Exactly. That's capitalism. So in a capitalistic society, we have two objectives. Our first objective is for us to take care of our current lifestyle right now. We want to go out to eat, take care of the kids, pay the bills, those kinds of things. Everybody agree? Yes. 
Our second objective is for us to work right now, but to make enough money to last us into retirement. So many of you are very young, and that's fine. Everybody but AJ, you're a little old. <laughs> Still do better than young boys. <laughs> but with you all being young, I know that within the last few years, I hadn't thought anything about retirement. Mm -hmm. A little bit. Okay. I, I, I want to be retired like some. So, so I'm I'm saying, saying, I understand. Mean, me done it. Done it. Done it. Okay. So the thing is, is that with retirement, you have to work right now, but make enough money to last you into retirement, right? Many people, especially young people, aren't thinking about that. So I want you to think about right now, if you had to retire tomorrow, could you do it? Yeah, mm -hmm. some people might can. Mm -hmm. Many people can't. Okay, so if you if you had to retire now, you had enough money in your bank account to last you for the next 30 years, because many people are living a lot longer. Okay, so with that, if you don't have enough money now, we have to consider what we're doing now and what we're going to do different tomorrow so that we can actually help ourselves in the future. Does that make sense? Nine times out of ten, we're working jobs, and that's the same thing we're going to do 20 years from now and still not be able to retire. Got to do something different. Got to have a strategy. We can't sell our way to wealth. We can't work our way to wealth. All right? Have to have a strategy. That's what I'm going to talk about. But those two objectives, we have four challenges. Our first challenge is inflation. Inflation is the constant rise of everything around us going up, but our income flatlining is staying the same. So in the 1960s and 1970s, gas was about 30 or 40 cents. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. How much is gas now? To $39. Close to $3, right? It's actually really low right now. Something's going on. <laughs> we don't know what. Something's going on. So with that, gas didn't just go up overnight. It didn't shoot up to $3 overnight from 30 to 40 cents. Did it? Yes? No? No. It, just, it crept up on us. Same thing as milk. Milk is actually higher than gas. Per gallon. It is. I looked at it. It was $5.26. And little rock the other day. Ooh. I was like, oh no, I don't need no milk. Don't worry. About it. I eat, I'll put some water on them cereal. <laughs> not gonna do it. It's, it's really important for us not to do So that's inflation. Um, taxes is our second challenge. Are we overpaying taxes? The government actually tells us that, and we'll show you in a, in a minute how they do that. Um, if we are 18 between the ages of 18 and 60, the average person makes about a over a million dollars working. Okay, the first third of your money of your million dollars goes to taxes. Second third actually goes to debt, which is our third challenge. And the last third goes to you for your current lifestyle and for retirement. And half of us don't know where that money goes. True, true. True. Yeah. So that's that's taxes. We have to be able to minimize that. We have to be able to control that. And we're actually going to show you how to do it. All right, our third challenge is debt. Between the ages of 18 and 30, the average American accumulates about $200,000 in debt. How? Let's talk about it. Whenever you graduate from high school, what do people tell you to do? Get credit cards. <laughs> Get credit cards, mm -hmm. go to college, right? Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about both of those. If you go to college first, then you did what? You usually got what? Student loans? Mm -hmm. That's what? Debt? Mm -hmm. Exactly. So we got student loans, and then when I went to school, I started at Russellville. When I went to school, they had um, Visa and Discover waiting on us. Like, yeah, you need these cards. Mm -hmm. So you get credit cards to buy things you can't afford, right? So credit cards is more what? Yeah. Okay. Then you go out and you say, well, I can't walk to school. I need a car. New car. New car. Mm -hmm. That's more what? Yeah. Debt. Okay. Now, after we graduate from college, usually we say, okay, I'm, I'm going to get a family. I got to take care of everything. I need a home. I'm going to go buy me a home. And we go get a home loan, right? Yes? More than what? Those four things put us in debt. And it's so common in America, and we feel like that's stuff that we're supposed to do. And we don't have a strategy on, on what we can do differently to not get into so much debt. Okay? Fourth challenge is financial literacy. We don't know what to do with our money. If we do the research on the people who win the lottery, they're broke between the next three to five years. So you research. Next three to five years, they're broke. Why? Anybody know? No, because they start splurging. Because they don't get that money at one time. They don't what realize you do? if you win a million dollars, the taxes on a million dollars is almost a half million dollars. That That's mm -hmm. the point. And then she said they go splurge. Mm -hmm. So those two things alone, more than half of their money is already gone. Make sense? We have to do the research. And then this actually is one of the reasons why I'm doing it is because when I grew up, and many of you don't know this, so we'll actually get real personal right now. I grew up and my grandmother was a bootlegger. 
Now, as a bootlegger, <laughs> here we go. Uh, as, oh God, I as a bootlegger, we know that that does not come with a pension plan or a 401k, right? You come with a lot of stuff, but that ain't that's not one of them. Now, with that concept, she wasn't able to teach my mom about money. And my mom was not able to teach me about money. So therefore, you can't teach a person what you don't know, right? Everybody agree? Mm -hmm. So with that, now I'm able to actually cut and drop and stop that generational curse and actually start building generational wealth for my family and our children's children. Now, the thing is, is that I'm not only helping myself or just my family, but I'm helping the people around me, my friends, the people I know, because this information is going to not only change just my life, your life, it's going to change everybody's life. If you make or spend money, you're going to be able to use this concept and what we're about to show you. Okay. Before we can shift your income, we have to shift your mindset. Many times we, we're here in America and we focus on everything but the right things. Point blank period. We focus on everything. So we're going to focus on a couple of things that we probably need to be focused on. So someone tell me what an asset is. Something that you own that's yours that has value. Nice. Great example. We're going to be real simple today. Assets make you money. Okay? Simple enough? Mm -hmm. If assets make you money, liabilities do what? Cost you money. Cost you money, and that means they take, you, take your money, right? Mm -hmm. So assets do what? Make money. Make money. Couldn't hear you. Assets do what? Make, make money. money. And liabilities do what? Take, take your money. money. Great concept. We're gonna, we're gonna focus on that for a couple of seconds just to make sure we have a good a good um point of reference. Now I was actually reading this book. It's called Rich Dad Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. Robert Kiyosaki is a real estate guru. He knows his stuff, and he's up there with Donald Trump, so he definitely knows it. So he told me when I was reading his book, I just bought my home. When I bought my home, yeah, a whole lot of stuff. I'm be good. I'm grown now. That's how I felt. My parents told me, the biggest assets you could buy or have was a car and a home. Anybody ever told you that before? Yes? Good. So with that, he told me that my home was a liability. I said, I oh, no. I don't know that. That's what I was thinking. So when I did the research, I actually came up with these two concepts. A cash flow asset and an equity asset. A cash flow asset is something that makes you money now. Makes you a lot of money. Cash flow comes through your home. Cash flow. And many times we have either positive cash flow or negative cash flow. Either it's always house or it's constantly coming to know how to keep it. Now, I won't say if we have negative and positive, I won't say that. You just think about it in your head. All right, so that's cash flow. Equity asset is something that makes you money later. Make sense? Okay, so which one is my home? Equity. Equity. That's the correct answer. My home is an equity asset, so therefore, if I'm doing taking out the garbage, not taking out the garbage, getting the, getting the trash stuff done, doing the upkeep on my home, getting it painted, getting the yard done. Is that taking money out of my pocket? Yeah. Right now it is. Currently it is, but you're putting more into your house. Is that taking money out of my pocket? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So typically, it's a liability. Yes? Mm -hmm. or, yes? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. So with the definition we have, it's make money or take money. My home, keeping my up on my home, is actually a liability for right now. We won't go deep, but really it depends on what it, what it looks like when you get paid for it after the 30 years. What it is, whenever you get to the equity of it, it is even an asset when you get there. So we have to think about that. We won't go deep, but what we're going to show you today is how to turn your home, whether you rent or you buy. That's really, that's really important. Whether you are renting your apartment or you're buying a home, show you how to turn it into a cash flow asset now. So cash flow through your home with stuff you're going to buy anyway, you're going to do anyway. Um, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah, let's do it. <clears throat> Two taxes in America, one for the business owner and one for the employee. Okay, what does that mean? Well, employees are taxed at about 28 to 33%. It's really high. Business owners are taxed about 18 to 23%, and that is the net effect. Investments are taxed about give or take 10%. Now tell me, because I know many of you have jobs, right? Yeah. What's what's taken out of your check before you get it? Taxes. Taxes. So the government gets your money before you do, right? Mm -hmm. After you pay the highest amount than everybody else, then they get your money before you. So it's not to lose, and I won't say it, but it's big. after you pay your taxes, then you pay bills, right? And then if there's anything left, you pay yourself. The key word was if there is anything left. 
that's many problems many people have. we don't have enough cash flow and that's money after we pay taxes and our bills to actually support ourselves and our lifestyle we want you to take control of that as a business owner you actually pay yourself first then you pay bills and then you pay taxes doesn't that look a little better yeah so look at this concept. What does this mean? What does this have to do with you? All right, so what we do is we teach you in my econ to turn your lifestyle into business and to write offs. McDonald's has like gas and water, right? Yes. Those are actually tax deductions for those for those corporations, those places, those businesses. So what does that mean? Well, what we do is we tell you to take McDonald's and put it into your home. When you put McDonald's into your home, the same benefits that McDonald's get, now you can get into your home and actually turn the things that you're gonna do anyway into deductions. That's what we do. Turn your life into a write-off. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Say y'all gotta say yeah, y'all just not. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm just like, okay, yeah. I think they got it. All right, so what does that mean? You're gonna write off your lifestyle. Rent, mortgage, vacation, internet, cell phones, utilities, things you're going to pay for anyway. Are you going to do these things anyway? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why not let the government help you pay for them? Mm -hmm. That's what we do. What What is this? Well, this is the business. I want you to be clear. We don't go out and sell products. We educate people that this is what you can do to change your lifestyle and, and help yourself. It's not about the money that we're spending or the money that we're making or that we're not making enough money. It's how much money we're keeping. So if we're keeping this money, then that means I have more money to do with stuff that I want to do, right? Mm -hmm. I do a lot of stuff I want to do. A lot of it. So let's look at it. Let's put it into the context. Everybody in here pays rent a mortgage, basically? Mm -hmm. Yes? She mad. Yeah, I'll pay it. <laughs> <laughs> let's say, for example, you pay about $1,000 a month. And this is for purposes. I know... Um, I can help you is really kind of small. <laughs> but fine, some of them will be real low. You'll, you'll get to see it. But this is just for example purposes only. Um, say you pay about a thousand dollars a month and you get 20% of it to be written off. Now, technically, you can get 30% of your home and utilities and everything written off. You can get up to 30. How does this work? Well, we said we we're putting McDonald's into your home, right? Mm -hmm. That means that you have an office space into your home that you're running as your business, right? Yes. Okay. So that means if you have an office space with a portion of your home, that means you also can have to use the benefits of that by writing off a portion of everything you do. So 30% of your home is used as an office. That doesn't mean go out and get stuff like this and put it into a room. You don't have to do that. You can use your bedroom. You can use the kitchen. Just as long as you have a All right. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. Yes. That's yearly savings of $2,400. Okay, utilities, you got to pay a lot of gas water, right? Yep. If you don't, you're going to be in the dark and stank. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's say that's $500 a month. 20% of it is being used um, as a tax deduction. That's yearly savings of $1,200. Are we going to do these things anyway? Mm -hmm. yep. Yes. Home internet. Everybody got internet here. You're in school. Of course you do. Internet, let's say you pay $50 a month. That's probably really low. 100% of it can be written off because you have a business online. Everything we do is online. Okay? 100% of it, that's a yearly savings of $600. Mm -hmm. Cell phone, everybody raised their hand on cell phone. One of them just vibrated. <laughs> right? Yeah. All right. Let's yeah, say you no pay. <laughs> Let's say you pay. Oh my God. $100 a month. You paid $100 a month, okay? 85% mm -hmm. of it can be used for business. We, I'm a, and I'm going to give you an example in just a second on how this all will apply. But 85% of the time you use it for business, that's $1,020 savings. Are you going to use your cell phone anyway? Yes. Yeah. Does that make sense? Do. Okay, mm -hmm. good deal. Travel and lodging. I went to Cancun about a month ago. Actually, we all did. It was really fun. And it was great. Oh, we had a great time. But we went to Cancun for personal growth business development that's business right you gotta, you gotta grow personally to grow in your business we learned a lot of business principles and we had a lot of fun in Cancun with the tax deduction it cost about three thousand dollars on its own and now I can write it off so when you go on spring break when we go on spring break because we have a trip plan we're going to spring break we're gonna write it all off because we're gonna do business while we're there 
It's gonna so be great. If you got a family and you and your family going to Cancun, mm -hmm. it's three thousand dollars per person. You get to write all those people off. Um, we show you. We gonna talk about it. So this three thousand for this travel, like you pay that up front and then you get it back. Is that what you're saying? You get it back into your your tax deductions at the end of the year. So it's like you're getting it back. Yes. We're gonna show you how it applies. We show you every portion of it to make sure you have a good understanding. All right. So everybody got that? Mm -hmm. Um actually, Nargis, would you like to give us a short testimony on what the business has done for you? Yes. Um about a year ago, my I lost a house to a foreclosure. My credit was completely ruined. And um, thanks to the strategies of this business, my credit score went up by over 100 points in less than a year. It's still going up. Um, I was able to purchase a brand new vehicle. Ooh. And I'm doing really good. I've been taking trips to Cancun also. Right. <laughs> good stuff. Thank you. Appreciate that. So it, it's really helping a lot of people, regardless of what the situation is. If you make or spend money, this applies, regardless. Um, everybody go out to eat. I know you do, because nobody wants to eat in the ghetto. Like, <laughs> <laughs> nobody. So approximately a thousand dollars a year. That's really low. I looked at my numbers the other day, um, and mine was at three thousand. I was just like, oh my god, I'm glad I'm able to write this off. That's mm -hmm. that's crazy. Eat out a lot. Always on the road. When you're going, eat out. Um, we show you how to write it off. Inter City does not have parties for fun. Okay, mm -hmm. those oh, are so promotion right. parties, the rock parties. You get they get paid for that. He needs those tax deductions because he makes a lot of money. He needs that, so he's not just giving it away for fun. It looks good though, and they have a good time too, right? So if you had a Super Bowl party at your house, you stood up in front of the room and you said, "Hey, you all, I teach a strategy called income shifting. Y'all need to give me a call. Write your name down." And I, we're not going to talk about it right now because it's halftime. We're going to watch commercials. But write your name down, and I'll give you a call later. That's business, right? Mm -hmm. That whole party, Super Bowl party you just had, is a tax deduction because you attempted to do business. All right? That's love. <laughs> <laughs> she said that's love. Anybody drove here today? Yeah, me too. And I got paid because the government gives us 56 cents per mile to drive on business. It goes up to 57 cents next year. It's gonna be awesome. So, say for example, I drove 10,000 miles on my car this year for business. I drove a lot more than that. But if I drove 10,000 miles, this means the government gives me back $5,600 in tax deductions. I'm gonna drive my car anyway, right? Mm -hmm. Why not make it business? That total is $16,000. Write that down. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm gonna put this in perspective. Let's say that Jessica goes. Jessica, where are you from? Little Rock. Little Rock. Let's say you go to Texas. You have family in Texas, and you're going on a trip. So when you go to Texas, you drove your car, and you got a hotel. Okay. At that hotel, when you pulled up, you didn't. You pulled up and you went to the the desk to check in, and you made sure before you left the desk, you said, "Hey, ma'am, I teach a strategy called income shifting. Here's my business card. You should give me a call. That's business, right?" Now we just turned that whole trip into a tax deduction because that travel, that travel with her car, she drove, right? Mm -hmm. She drove for business? Yes. Tax deduction. She went out to eat because anything you do when you do business the next 24 hours is tax deductible. When she goes out to eat while she's on that trip, that's a tax deduction. That hotel that she had to pay for is now a tax deduction. That her phone number is on that business card, right? Mm -hmm. Tax deduction. Can we get it? We understand? Everything you do can be a tax deduction when you have a home-based business. Let's be clear. You can't just do this if you don't have a home-based business. Okay, I'm just going to ask you that. Yeah, you can't just go out and say, I'm going to write off stuff because I can do it. No. The average person, anybody that have a business can only have like eight deductions, eight tax deductions. That's it. In a home-based business, you have over 150. So this is eight, and it's at sixteen thousand dollars. Imagine if you use twenty of them. I didn't say hundred. I said twenty. We already had sixteen thousand with eight. So this is very beneficial for everyone. But this is what we do. We teach financial education. We teach you how to get your finances in order. This is just why home based business. Why my econ? Well, my econ is different because we don't tell you to go out and sell travel. 
We're not going out and telling you to go sell coffee. We're not doing that. We're just telling you to go go tell people that they can really change their life by using tax deductions and turn their their home, their business into home. Home into a business. Anybody got kids? Yes. Oh yeah, you got like five, don't you? Whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I got three of y'all claim. <laughs> um. All right. <laughs> what we do is we, we teach you. Now, you know that you get a child tax care credit anyway for having children. We do is we teach you how to get an extra $5,800 on top of the child tax care credit that you already get. So what does that mean? Well, you now have a home office or business at your home, right? Well, Donald's employees have to clean their home. I mean, clean their business. Mm-hmm. They get paid for that, right? So now we turn your children into employees. They're going to clean the home anyway. Now you can get $5,800 extra on top of what you already get for turning your children into employees and allowing them to work for you. You don't have to pay taxes on it either. Now, I guess you love that, don't you? Oh, I love it. <laughs> we tell you get you a bank account. You're going to give them allowances. You're going to take them out to eat. You're going to take them on vacations. You're going to buy school clothes anyway. Just get them an account and say that's how you pay them, and that's your proof. And everything you spend on your children, you just spend it through, through that site, through your, through your account, and use it as a tax deduction. Yes. When you're traveling and so you're writing off the the car miles and mm-hmm. the dinners and the hotels, how are you proving to the government that you've actually done business once you leave? We'll show you in just a minute. Okay. We have a second portion. I'm done. I'm going to be done in just a second. Um, this section here is one of my last sections, and I'm going to bring Mr. Young up. Um, this is Sandy Bakken. He's a CPA and former IRS tax attorney. He said that every North American taxpayer who works a full-time job and does not have a side business could be overpaying taxes three to $9,000 per year. So if you have two jobs, double those numbers, okay? Shit, I got Oh. <laughs> yeah, double those numbers. Now that, that's real clear, okay? Three to nine thousand dollars. He said it, not me. And and we always like to provide proof because it's really important for you all to know that we didn't just make this stuff up. So when he in his book, if you just read the, the title, you don't have to read anything else. That's it. Why you could be brain dead? That's no best business if you don't already have one. Nice. Great. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that's first chapter. <laughs> <said, "Okay." laughs> Exactly. So what we do is we always like to provide, provide proof. That man has his, his home, which is a yacht, on water because it pays less than that. What? Yeah. He worked for the people, so he just coming out and he's just <laughs> writing books and telling us what to do. So we're just following the rules. Does that make sense to everyone? Do we have any questions over this section before we move on? Good. All right. So this next section, we're going to talk about, I told you why home-based business, why my econ, why you should be doing this. Um, and I'm going to bring up a young man who's going to tell you what we do and how. How you're going to apply everything we just showed you. Um, Kevin actually started the One More Movement. The One More Movement, we're a group of people um, that come together and we use it as a marketing tool. My econ is our umbrella and the movement, we just use it to attract people to wonder what we're doing. That's what it is. He came up with the group and he has just went over and beyond. Um, money is definitely not an issue because he has made tons of money in this business. He was trained by the best of the best and always has a smile on his face because he loves to have a good time. Um, has a heart of gold and would put often, often puts others before himself. Loves to help people. Kevin, come on up. Oh, thank you. <laughs> That's why I was like, oh, superstar. <laughs> <laughs> Let's give Kevin another round of applause, please. Yeah, great job. Can you, you be sound a young man, but you call me Mr. Young. <laughs> oh, Mr. Young. So um, a lot of people ask me, why did I start the One More Movement, and why did I create this whole thing to educate people about finances? The first reason why I started was because I grew up in a single-parent home. My mom um, worked, went to college, very educated, actually was the manager over a tax, tax preparer place. Jackson Hewitt, H&R Block, was a manager for many years. But has she known the information that Candace shared with you and what I'm going to share with you tonight, I would have to go to five different elementary schools before I was eight. Now, in addition to that, I do have a son. Who all has children, children in the room? I know you do. Anyone else? No, I guess you got two. Anyone else? My son is three. I love him to death. I want to give my son something more than his money. I want to give him the knowledge and education of to put the money so he can be a generational wealth. And then in, in, at the end, I guess how you cut this because I want to give some facts about some things that we really need to look at. But right now, I'm going to have some fun. Um, I need someone to help me read first. 
Yeah. You're going to help. You got it. <laughs> for me and turn to page one. Who always finds a job in the room? If you were to be on the first part, the lot of bullets it says, where does refund come from? Yeah. Where does your refund come from? It comes from your wallet or purse. When you tell your employer how much to withhold from your paycheck or you want to make an estimated tax payment, for the average refund, there's about $40 a week too much. Okay. So I went to college. I got my undergraduate degree in business marketing and management with a little focus in finance. Got my undergraduate degree in that. I was not an English major. So I had to ask someone what where refund meant. Re means it again, and fund means money. They give you your money away. Again, whose money is it? Money. Your money. So why is it at the end of the week get so happy when the refund checks come? It's your money. <laughs> <laughs> and then what we do many times, we pay someone to get whose money back? Yours. We go to Jackson Union, we go to H and R Block and give them money to get money back. Hey, come on through. How you doing? You can go inside. So once we get that refund, at the bottom of that piece of paper, it tells us we pay about forty dollars a week to what? Too much. Much. Taxes are gonna go what? Up. If they going up, that was in two thousand five. That's that, that that's about a hundred dollars a week now in today's dollars. Because Kansas told you what inflation was. So what we have to understand is that we have to get our money back from the people that's stealing it. There's nothing wrong with owning the business. There's nothing wrong with having a job. But just know that there's two different games that's being played. One one person's getting played and the other person's playing the game. Make that, that make a big difference, right? Yeah. So let's let's look at the next section. Um, the next section, if you'll turn that page over. Here we go. You gotta look at this. We we're really interactive, so y'all 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 can talk, we can laugh, we can do all that. <laughs> y'all gotta be afraid. It's a fake. It's <laughs> fake. You don't talk to me. <laughs> you exclude out of the conversation. <laughs> Last Social Security Administration. I worked for the government. I retired from the government. And so about for working for Social Security Administration, I earned, you know, I, I made all right money. I made forty-seven thousand dollars a year. I was single. I told you I had a son, but I did not get to carry him. So what tax bracket am I in based on my marital status? 25%. So at 25%, I would have to pay $11,750 in taxes. Now, that's before they give us a break because the government loves giving us breaks. At the bottom of that piece of paper, I have what's called standard deductions. And based on your marital status, you get a certain amount. Now, I'm single. How much is that amount? $6,200. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then also, I get what's called a personal exemption. How much is that personal exemption amount? Thirty-nine fifty. Mm -hmm. Okay, so those added together is around ten thousand dollars. Can we agree? Mm -hmm. So that's around ten thousand dollars. Ten thousand minus forty-seven thousand has now have my taxable income at thirty-seven thousand dollars. Now, what tax bracket am I in? Still twenty-five percent. So at twenty-five percent of thirty-seven thousand is nine thousand two hundred and fifty dollars. That's how much I owe the government. That's a lot of money, right? You remember Candace said in a lifetime you give a third of your money to the government? This is why. The more money you make, the more they would take. 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 See, here is a beautiful thing about what we do. We have um, doctors, lawyers, attorneys, financial majors. We, matter of fact, we got the number seven financial advisor in the nation on our team. We have all those people. But see, they got to a point in life where they start paying this much in taxes and their paycheck was this much. So they had to do something about it. No matter how much you make, they would take more than what you make. So here's the thing. Because I simply done what Candace said to do earlier, that $16,000 she told you to write down, I went out. I didn't do any presentations. I was horrible. Candace, you remember how bad I was. Yeah. Nargis, you remember how bad I was. <laughs> I was horrible. But I did pass my business cards and attempted to do business. Amonzo, you remember how bad? I don't know if you remember how bad you I was. You was getting good. I was, I was getting good. I was, okay. I was passing my business cards to people, and by passing out those business cards, I was attempting to do business. My very first year, I wrote off $16,000. A little bit more, but about $16,000. Now, this is going to drop my taxable income to $21,000. What tax bracket am I in now? So I dropped the tax bracket, right? Mm -hmm. So by dropping the tax bracket, it may pay less what? 
taxes. Earlier you asked the question about how does it apply? Can you get this is how you get it back through tax deductions. Now, this is the reason why Donald Trump pays his taxes percentage wise than his secretary. Now, Donald Trump makes millions, millions on millions of dollars. His secretary doesn't, but he pays less tax percentage wise because he's income shifting. So we live in Arkansas. Everyone here live in Arkansas from Arkansas. We pay state taxes, right? Anyone want to give me the amount of that state refund check? Forty-five. Forty-five. She like she she up there trying to add. She like carry the one. <laughs> I think my check might have been a hundred. One hundred dollars. Two hundred dollars. Two hundred dollars used to be. Last year, because I simply opened up a home-based business, my state refund check was twenty-one hundred dollars. What? Yes, I got all of it back, with the exception of like forty-five dollars. Now, in addition to that, I saved sixty-one hundred dollars in federal taxes. Now you add those two together. That's a little bit over eight thousand dollars, right? So my very first year, I didn't go out and sell anything. We, we don't sell. I didn't go out and really tell a whole bunch of people because I didn't know what I was doing. All I did was simply open up a home-based business and set to do business, and I cash flow over eight thousand dollars back into my home, right? Okay. So the next thing I want to go over is this. A lot of people ask, okay, how much does it cost to get a home-based business? Let me tell you this: to start a McDonald's, to start a McDonald's, before they even talk to you on the phone. You got to have a million in the bank. Mm -hmm. And once you had a million in the bank, you got to pay for franchising fees. You got to buy the hamburger buns, the, the special sauce, the hamburger patties, all that kind of stuff. That's that's cost about fifteen, twenty thousand dollars a month, depending on what you're doing with McDonald's. Now, I don't know the exact things, but that's, it's around that much. To get a business in your home is one seventy nine ninety nine one time. So what do you get? First thing you get is a strategy. You would never be able to sell your way to wealth. Or work your way to wealth. You have to work yourself to death before you do that. So what you have to understand is that you have to have a strategy. So the first strategy we teach is to minimize your taxes. Eighty to ninety percent of Americans have a W four feel that wrong. They go put a zero or one. I'm gonna tell you both of those are wrong. If you put zero or one, both of them wrong. If you read the form, the average person can get at least two, but most people don't even read the form. So what you have to do is first adjust your W four. Nargis, how much does your paycheck go once you just hear that before? Right away, about four hundred dollars. A month, a week, uh, every two weeks. Uh, every two weeks. Every two weeks, so about about an eight hundred dollar raise every month. Mm -hmm. Nargis, um, she works for federal government. Federal government as well. So, in addition to doing that, the second strategy that we have is to eliminate your debt. Candace told you earlier, you're gonna get about two hundred thousand dollars worth of debt anyway between the age of eighteen. So I heard earlier you said you don't have student loans. You lucky. <laughs> you real lucky. But just take that as a blessing, though. Take it as a blessing. So between the age of 18 and 30, you're going to get $200,000 worth of debt. So next, we teach you how to eliminate your debt or don't get any debt, whichever one you have now. The last thing we teach you to do is investment education. So we're gonna I'm, I'm going to share with you how this works, but I'm going to show you what you get for this price. Now, to keep the system going, you got to keep the system going. It's $29.95 a month to keep your system going. You get the cash flow manager, the cash flow strategist. We'll go over that in a minute. If you want to go out and share this information with other people, it costs four three ninety a month. So you can do either or. You can get your own financial house in order, and keep in order, or you can go out and tell people about it, whichever one you want to. Do. So what all do you get? Earlier you asked the question, how can you prove um, that you're doing business, right? The way you prove that you're doing business about is by keeping good records. We have what's called the cash flow manager. It keeps every record that you do business with. Say, for instance, when, when we leave from here, we go eat. I got my phone. Now, we all got we all got uh, mobile phones because and uh, smartphones because everyone raised their hand by capitalism. So on your phone, you get Now, when we eat, after the meal is finished, we're going to get a receipt. We take a picture of the receipt, put who we're with, why we were there, what we're doing there, meals and entertainment, and put the mouths in. All in from my phone, it goes to my computer. When we get home, we can click and your to 45 minutes at the end of the year, first for five, 10, 10 days, 10 months. So now your taxes are done. In addition to that, the next thing you get is this. You can have your products. You can have your products if you would like to. If you like selling coffee, go sell coffee. We don't teach that. We teach you to become your own personal economy. So you won't let the economy affect you. You buy this stuff from yourself. Family Shield 360, part product we have. Anyone been in the car accident before? You have anyone else? Did, did, did you share this company? No. 
So why not have an attorney on speed where you can get information about that? We also have identity theft solutions. I, I used to work for a place where identity theft was the number one reason why people came in our office because someone said they stole my social security number. Well, because that happened, the ship 36 will pay you up to $500 a week to get it taken care of while you get that taken care of. Make sense? All right. The next thing you get is this. You get events counseling. I'll tell you now. I tell my family and friends all my because then I tell other family and friends, then other family and friends, and everybody know Kevin's business. I would rather call someone that has nothing to do with it, that's a certified therapist, that I can talk to. You all have coffee. You want to um, drink the coffee? You want to drink a Starbucks? Anybody? Mm -hmm. Yeah. How much, how, how much does a Kevin Mogado cost now? It was like 4 dollars She knows the exact price. <laughs> I'm going to tell the size. I, I used to drink Starbucks, but now I drink healthy coffee. Keep me in shape. I try to stay in shape. Less than a dollar a day for coffee now versus four thirty five. See, we gotta understand that with capitalism, you're gonna pay someone versus you paying yourself. So I'd rather become my own personal economy and buy stuff for myself. The next thing you get is cashback mob. Very, very powerful. We just had a huge shopping day across the nation about two or three weeks ago. Anyone know what it was? Black Friday. Black Friday. On Black Friday, I guarantee you that a lot of people account went in the red. I'm most sure that they had negative money at the end because people would literally go spend their wealth to make people feel happy. Let me explain. The other day on Facebook, I was just, you know, contacting my friends and how, how are you doing? This girl said, I just went and bawled out on my son a whole bunch of toys. Now, I, I was thinking in my mind, you got one son and you bawled out with a bunch of toys. He can't play one toy at a time. Mm -hmm. He can't play with all 50 toys at one time. And then sometimes I don't even play with the toys you get. So you just put your account in the red for your son to play with toys. I buy a book. Have him read. Do things like that. I mean, I'm not saying try to tell you to raise your kid. Why not buy something that he can use one time or one moment? Uh -huh. So with that mom, you get paid back for things you're gonna do anyway. Anyone shop at Walmart? Anyone shop? Everybody? Anybody shop at Best Buy? Anybody shop at well we got carnival? Anybody cruise? And when got rising, 18, target. These places you can anyway, go to your online mall that you have a website, click, go straight to this website, and you shop. Candace, get you about the mall because you just bought a home. Yeah, I bought a home, but then even with that one, I bought my books on. So instead of just ordering them from Amazon and um, not getting back, I bought, you know, so I buy my app from school and then they send me money back to buy my books. So I was like, why? And they send them to my house, it's like regular. I get them online to my site. So you say time and money. Time. time from having to drive to the bookstore, mm -hmm. asking for the book number and all that kind of stuff. You just send to your home. Yep. Nice. Um, three months ago, because we traveled it, two or three months ago, we stayed at the West. Now, it costs around $170 a night mm -hmm. to stay at the book. <laughs> so you went to the west <laughs> about 170 dollars a night now price line on your cash but it's a little bit different than a normal price line it more have relationships with them the company has with everyone on this on this um, page well because price line we pay 60 dollars also send us cash back because it's called the cash mom mm -hmm. so then we get dollars on top of that so our set the Western was around four fifty dollars. That should be like a wow. <laughs> Relationships with every company that's on here. So let's look at the next okay. I mean anyone love a travel. Some people like to travel, but do you love I love to travel. Love to travel. Yeah. Disney World. <laughs> everyone. Yeah, I said the Disney World. <laughs> this trip is the Disney World. Now, you can stay in a mansion just like this. Five bedroom, three and a half bath, sleeps 10 people, $15 per night per person. Mm -hmm. She's looking like, really? <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> yeah, really. You can take everyone in this room, chip in $18, go to Disney World. That'd be fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> in, addition, <laughs> in addition to that, you also get cash. You buy cash back Wow. So not only do you for a night, but then the company says you're doing something you're just not doing anymore. Disney World. Mm -hmm. Go back to 
So how do you make the first way you make it is by using the strategy. That's it. Remember, anyone in the movie a great we had a great time. Oh yeah. Did, did you tell someone? Yeah. Did they send you a check? Yeah. <laughs> no, you check. <laughs> <laughs> they you a check. So get your finances while you're doing it. You should be coming and you get paid. For every seven people you get into the business, every seven people you tell us about and they do, you can pay a thousand dollar check. I got paid a lot of thousand dollars. But for every seven you do, you get a thousand dollars. And it keeps coming limited, it doesn't stop. Anyone would love to make a thousand of seven people? Mm -hmm. And I'm good. She said, She went by money. She's um, like two. So the first strategy we taught you how to do, we're gonna get rid of the strategies now. The first we taught you to do is to minimize your what? Taxes. Next we're gonna show you how to eliminate your debt. Mm -hmm. Um I will be I am almost 30 years. So when I was 18, the first time when I went up, went to college was I got student what? Yeah. I, I got student loans a lot. And then when I went on college campus, as Cannon said earlier, Visa, Mascar, and Discover was sending it on me. It was like they had this concierge service. They had my name, and it was like, you're gonna get this credit card. I got credit cards. I had like three or four of them before I was 20. That's more what? Yeah. Then, then I got a car because I was like, I can't walk to school. I got a car. And I lived off campus. So now I got more what? Yeah. Debt. And then finally, finally, the last thing I was like, when I got 20, I graduated. I thought, I was like, man, I'm making a little bit of money. I can go to big what? House. Oh, yeah. House. So now I got over $200,000 in. Now, this, all, this was all before I turned 30. Now, this is called the cash flow strategies. You get this for the 29.95, you get this as well. This will tell you how long it's going to take to pay off your debt, what you need to pay off first. It gives you a roadmap and GPS to pay your stuff off a whole lot faster. See, it's one thing to pay um, the mortgage on time, but it may be another thing to pay your credit cards off a little bit faster because they have high, higher interest. This tells you what to do. Now, the next thing is this. Once you pay off your debt, then you have that money left over, right? Mm -hmm. So we minimize your taxes. We showed, we showed, I showed you my story where I got over eight thousand dollars back. I took that eight thousand dollars and paid my what? Debt. Yeah. Debt. So now I'm debt free. So now I have more money to do what? Spend. Now, now this, 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 this for her right there. Oh, yeah. Invest. Mm -hmm. Invest. Now we're gonna get to something that she probably gonna gonna love. This is called the rule of seventy-two. This is actually the eighth wonder of the world. This is not Albert Einstein was very, very smart. When he made this when he made this up, it was so powerful that all the banks and insurance companies decided to use it. And let me explain. Anyone got a bank account in the room? Everyone. That's good. That's good. So at your bank account, how much do you get in your savings account? How much is like interest? Um instead of bank corporate like twenty percent, compounded quarterly and then regions is I heard you say a lot of points quarterly. before. Points before you said. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, for me, less than one percent. Yeah. <laughs> less than one percent. Now, what the rule of seventy-two does is this: you take seventy-two divided by your interest rate you get at the banks, which right now is point something. Zero one. Zero. Our base had point zero one. Mm -hmm. um, point something, and it tells you how long you get money to double. Now, with myself. I, I didn't start off with ten thousand dollars, but for example purposes, we're gonna use ten thousand dollars. So at ten thousand dollars, I invest one time. It's gonna grow over time. So let's look at. It. Let's not use Arvest or Regions or Southern Bank Corp. Let's just look at four percent. So seventy-two by four percent. My money will double every eighteen years. So at age thirty, I make a one-time investment of ten thousand dollars. At age forty-eight, it grows twenty thousand. And at age sixty-six. My money grows to, is it $40,000? $40,000. Can you retire off that? You can, right? So this is what we have to realize. There's people now retiring into property. Earlier, Candace asked you all a question. She said that if you had today, could you retire today if you wanted to? See, many times what we'll do, we'll, we'll wait and say, well, I'll worry about that later. And then later comes, and we're not ready. So here's the thing. I work for Social Security. The average retirement first account that people had was less than $33,000. That's what people retired off of. 
So we have to be smarter, way smarter. So if 4% gave me $40,000, how much would it take for this number to double if I raise the percentage rate? What would this number have to go to? You're gonna say eight? Okay. Let's look at six percent because that's simple interest. We work, we're looking at compound interest now, way more powerful. So at age 30, I make a one-time investment of ten thousand dollars. At age 42, it goes to twenty thousand. At age 54, it goes to forty thousand. At age 66, I now have eighty thousand dollars in my retirement account. Is that still enough money? Because Candace told you earlier, you gotta have ten times money you make now to support your retirement. If you make fifty thousand dollars now, fifty thousand dollars now. You got to have over five hundred thousand fortune retirement, and many people want more than that. He said, "Yeah, I want more than that." So here's the thing: we're talking about money making money. See, labor making money is you getting up to go to work every day, you hurting your back, you hurting your legs, you be tired mentally, and you be tired physically. See, money don't have a back, legs, attitude, none of that. Money making money, it just keeps going over and over and over again. So what we have to realize is that we have to understand that money is way more powerful than we are when it comes to doubling. Because you can't make two of yourself. A three, a four, or five. So the next thing I want to show you is the bank and insurance companies are getting way more than that. If they want to give us four and six percent, how much do you think they get? Let's look at twelve percent. Twelve percent. Let's look at twelve. Seventy-two divided by twelve. Every six years, the money's going to double. Before I get to that, how much did you open your investment account with? A thousand dollars. So you don't have to ten thousand. No. You have to start. Yes. And do you put money in every month? Yes. So it keeps a little bit every month. So it keeps growing and growing and growing. See, when compound interest, the more money you put in there, the more it compounds. And here's the thing: some insurance companies get daily interest off of loans they give who? Us. Ours. Daily interest. Work probably one of the best you can make. <laughs> like I hurt your feelings. <laughs> um, loans, interest. Oh, please. Anyone had those before? <sighs> Overdraft fees is a billion dollar industry. They make a lot of money off of us with fees. Matter of fact, the bank fee is the death. Like every time you look up, there's another fee. Well, you got to punch your numbers in the, in the ATM machine. It's fees all the time. So here's the thing. Let's look and see what they're getting off of our money. At age 30, the bank has made $10,000. I, well, I invested $10,000. At age 36, they made $20,000. At age 42, they made $40,000. At age 48, the bank has now made $80,000, which if you look at this, at 42, they made more. They got their money. Y'all see it? At age 48, they got their money. At age 54, the bank has now made $160,000. At age 60, the bank made $320,000. And at age 66, the bank made $640,000. How much did I get? $40,000. <laughs> this happens every day. Every single day, people retire in the because they're not prepared. So this, the business we're talking about, the 179, it's a small fee compared to the thousand dollars you're losing by not knowing. See, not knowing costs way more than being educated. Education gonna cost you money, but not knowing costs you way more. Can we agree? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So at this point, what I like to tell people is this: don't let a social decision stop. Because here's the thing: what what I done first thing is I I went home and I asked my mom. I said, "Mom, what you think about this? Dad, what you think about this? Auntie, to all my family." But what I had to realize, my family was broke. Now, if we're building wealth, you can't be broke and skeptical. Because you need to do something different. <laughs> so they don't want to do anything different. They want to open it all. And many people are not open because they have a job mentality. They understand I got to get a job and make good money. Making good money and not having a strategy will cause you to pay more taxes, cause you to go on more debt. It's more $50,000 millionaires living in this world than at any other time because they're using credit cards. So when I say no, that a social decision steal your wealth, don't go home and try to ask your parents because they might not tell you the right thing. Now you can, you surely can, but just know they probably tell you that, you know what, this is one of those things, it doesn't work, but this is a business decision. Just like you made a decision to go to college, this is a decision so you can change your life and be a generational wealth. At this point, 
either your three, a two, or a one. A three says this, thanks for no thanks. I got a plan. I got a strategy. I know what I'm doing already. Well, thank you for listening because most people wouldn't. A two says I want the strategy of education because I need to learn how to build generational wealth. I'm tired of my family having a generational curse. A one says this, I'm all in. I want the strategies, the business, and the education. If you're a 201, we can help you out. If you're a three, um, thank you and have a great night. And I'll just cut that real quick. Actually, no, wait, wait a second. Um, there is a special right now going on. I told you it was $179.99. Um, because around this time of the year, you can't take advantage of all the tax, the tax, um, the tax advantages right now because we're at the end of the year. Our owners charges, our owners let's allows you to start your business for $9.95. What? Yes, it happens every year. It's their way of giving back. It's like holiday season is is it started now. <laughs> it started now. So with that, I'll get the camera real quick. 